G'day guys, Will Kitching here. Thanks for joining us. I hope you've been getting out there catching a few fish. I hope you've been enjoying your time on the water and I hope this video is helpful for you. So lately on my videos, I've been getting a lot of questions about the gear that we're using for snapper and other reef species. So I just thought today I'd really quickly go through it all. I'll show you the setups that we use, our rods, our reels, our line and our rig setups, all that sort of stuff. And then, uh, you know, go through why we use that and why it's so successful. So I really hope you enjoy this video. Now, I'm not going to stand here and say that this is the right way to do it or the only way to do it, but this is just what we use and have success with. So hopefully it's a bit of a guide for you to go and get your setup ready for snapper yourself. The other reason I wanted to make this video is to let you guys know that you don't need to go and spend heaps of money on fishing gear if you can't afford it. If you want to do that, that's totally fine, but we're just using mid-range setups. They're not super cheap, but they're your mid-range setups. They last us ages, we look after it all, and uh, they catch plenty of fish. So you can do it without spending heaps of money on the high-end gear. All right, without further ado, let's get straight into it. First of all, I'm just gonna walk you through our gear and then I'll explain why we use it. So for starters, we'll look at the setup that I use. So we have an overhead reel here, which is a Shimano TLD20. That's spooled up with some 20 pound braid. And I usually use 20 pound leader as well. And the rod is a six to 10 kilo, six foot six rod. Now, obviously you don't have to get the exact same rods that we use, but I just thought I'd show you what they are in case you're interested. Mine is a Fluger torsion. So next let's talk about dad's setup that he usually uses. So as you can see, it's very similar. This is also a Shimano TLD20 overhead reel. His rod is also six foot six, except his is eight to 15 kilos. So a little bit heavier. Dad's rod is a Silstar Crystal power tip. Silstar makes some great rods. And he's running 30 pound braid and he usually runs 20 or 30 pound leader. All right, so next up, we have the setup that my brother often uses. So he's got a good old pen spin fisher, 750 size. That's spooled with 30 pound braid and he often uses 30 pound leader as well. That's a bit longer rod, seven feet, and it's rated 10 to 15 kilos. My brother's rod is definitely on the cheaper end of the spectrum, but it has a great action, is comfortable to use, and has caught some really big fish. All right, getting into our soft plastic setup. So this will be an interesting one to talk about a bit later when we get to line class. But this is a small reel, a 4,000 size reel, Abu Garcia Pro Max. And uh, it's got 12 pound braid and we often run a 14 pound leader. So you may think that's very light for snapper, but we'll talk about that a bit later in the video. Now that's just on a very basic six foot rod and uh, that catches us a lot of fish. Now that last soft plastic rod, we often leave that in the rod holder. If you're looking at casting, you might want something a little bit longer like this. This is about seven feet or maybe a touch over. And uh, it's just a 4,000 size reel spooled with 20 pound braid and I run 20 or 30 pound leader. So that is really good for casting soft plastics up in the shallows and stuff like that for snapper. Now this brand is actually Cast King, which was in Australia for a little bit, but it's a US brand. So I'll give you a close up of that in a second, but anything around that four or 5,000 size reel with a bit longer rod around seven feet, 20 pound braid, 20 pound leader, that'll get you going for snapper with soft plastics. All right, now that we've gone through our actual setups, let's talk about why these are so successful for snapper and why this is the type of gear that we like to use. And we'll also show you our full line setup of how we attach our leaders and hooks and rigs and all that sort of stuff. So when you're looking for a rod for snapper, you definitely need something that's nice and strong through that middle and back section because snapper are a really powerful fish, especially if you hook one of those big ones. They have really big head shakes and some screaming runs and sometimes they'll try to get you down in the bottom so you definitely need some power to be able to hold on to them and control them a little bit but you also need a nice sensitive tip so you can feel everything that's going on you can feel your bites and also that sensitive sensitive tip will absorb those head shakes as well so you know when they're really bumping their head and running you'll pull the hooks if your rod is too stiff so you don't want an absolute broomstick you want something that's nice and light and sensitive in the tip so you can feel what's going on but then as that starts to load up, nice and strong in that midsection. Another good one. I've been floating down a pilchard. Oh, jeez. Oh, I've been floating down a pilchard all day. That's a good piece. Now, our rods are both six foot six. Anywhere around that length is pretty good. You don't want them too long when you're in the boat, but uh, you don't want them too short either. So that's a nice sort of in-between size. Now, the other thing is you definitely want to match that rod to the line class that you're using. So 
as I said, I have 20 pound on this and I'm running a six to 10 kilo rod. Dad's got 30 pound and his is eight to 15 kilos. So if you don't do that, if you don't match your line, uh, your, your rod, sorry, to the line class that you're using, you can break rods. If you have to pull a snag off or you hook a shark or something like that and you have to lock your drag up to bust it off, you can snap rods or even just on big fish. Now, as you see, Dad and I are both running overhead reels and my brother's running a spin reel, but there's a big reason that Dad and I love using our overhead reels for snapper. There's times where you might use a, a paternoster rig with a big snapper lead and just drop it straight to the bottom. And you can definitely do that on these reels and spin reels. But the way that we love to fish for snapper is called float lining, where you're using a nice small sinker and floating your bait down nice and slowly on top of them. So the key is to get that bait going down nice and slowly. With a spin reel, it can be hard to do that because you know when you're in deeper water and your line's sort of floating out, as the line's coming off the spool of a spin reel, your rod tip will be flapping, it won't be going out smoothly and it's hard to feel whether you get a bite on the drop. As well as that, it's hard to control that line and slow it down if you need. But with these spin reels, sorry, overhead reels, you can put your thumb on that spool and just control that line as it goes down, control that bait, let it out nice and slowly. You can feel everything that's going on because that line comes off really, really smooth. So as soon as you get a bite or the tiniest little touch, you can feel that. You can just click that lever up and strike. With a spin reel, if you get a bite, that line will just fly off and it can be hard to get your bail arm over, but in general, it'll be really hard to feel it. Apologies for the car in the background, but I wanna show you an example of exactly what I was just talking about where we're just slowly floating down, a snapper picks it up and all we're doing is just clicking that up and striking. Whereas with a spin reel, it can be a lot harder. You can miss fish or not even feel the bite at all. Yeah. That'd be one of them. Yeah. Back my drag off a little bit this time. He's going. Yeah. This is a good one. A good fish. Uh, it's a good one. Good fish. Now, as I was just saying, my brother prefers to use a spin reel. So even though dad and I try to get him onto an overhead all the time, he just likes the spin reel. You can still do it, but it is a lot harder. So obviously, yes, you can use a paternoster rig with this, just drop it straight to the bottom. But when you're float lining, what you have to do is you have to pinch that line between your fingers and do what we call feathering it, where as it's running out, you slow it down, you, you pinch it between your fingers and um, you know, that way you, you can hopefully feel a bite if a fish picks it up on the drop, which is seriously 90 or 90% 90 or more of the bites we get when we're fishing for snapper are on the drop. So you have to feather that line, let it run out, try and slow it down, and also try and feel if a fish hits it and quickly flick that bail arm over. That's a fish, Matt. No. Click it over. Yeah, no, I was trying. Good fish. Good, Good fish. fish. Is your drag set? Is his drag set right? Yep. What a cracking fish, Matt. Well done. Absolutely beauty. Now I will admit, the place where spin reels come into their own for snapper is on shallower reef because, say you're anchored and you need to cast your bait, it's you, you can't do that with an overhead. You just have to feed it out from the back of the boat. Whereas with these, if you want, you can cast it out to the side and let it wash down with the current, and uh, that's where these would be really good. So it's just about the situation and place that you usually fish. These are also a lot easier to float line with if you're using a smaller sinker or no sinker. So when we're out a bit deeper and we have to put a bigger sinker on, that's where the overheads start to become a lot easier. And this is a lot harder because that line's running out faster. Now you may also be wondering why I run 20 pound and dad and my brother run 30 pound. So to be honest, you can catch snapper and big snapper on 20 pound line. Dad often runs a 20 pound leader anyway. So we both end up fishing 20 pound breaking strain and honestly, that is fine for a lot of fish. I get comments saying, you know, you get busted off on that or where I fish, I get busted off. And yes, it happens to us sometimes, but it's usually when we hook fish like kingfish, which we're not really targeting anyway. So for snapper, we've caught fish up to 89 centimeters on 20 pound line. So that was just recently and it went bloody hard and dad still landed it on 20 pound leader. Oh my, oh, oh, holy. Yeah, that's a Spaniard, or a big snapper. It's a big snapper? Oh my God. Just take it easy here. Get him. Oh, holy. 
<laughs> he, he just threw up a whole crab. Oh my god. Yes. I've also caught bycatch like cobia, and it does give you a chance of landing those big fish as well. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. And it went really hard. That was only on 20 pound line a litre. So, yeah, that's a good effort, I think. Dad's caught massive Samson fish. He had a real dig. Whew. All sorts of stuff, you know, you, you can land on 20 pound. Now, them having 30 pound is definitely handy and that's why they have it because if they ever do want to go up to 30 pound leader, say we are getting busted off by some bigger fish or we're fishing somewhere with really gnarly structure or we're putting a live bait down to specifically target bigger fish, we can put a 30 pound or 40 pound leader on there. We have a couple of bit heavier setups and it's really handy just to have them there ready. Now the other handy thing to mention is all three of these rods, we use them for mackerel in summer as well and you know they're good all round rods. You can use them for a lot of different things and they're not just for snapper. So that's why we really like these setups. And uh, yeah, the 20 and 30 pound braking strain is also pretty good all around. Now the actual line that we have on our reels, as you can see, it's all braid. So you can use mono for snapper. A lot of people do, and there's pros and cons for both, but we just like to use the braid. Now the reasons for that is, first of all, it's a lot thinner than the mono. So if you have 20 pound mono and 20 pound braid, the braid is a lot thinner and that lets it cut through the water a lot better and you'll be able to get your baits down with less weight and float them down nicely. If you use mono, you'll often find that your line ends up a long way out the back of the boat, especially if you're drifting. Now, the other thing is braid is very sensitive, so you can feel absolutely everything that's happening on the end of your line, whereas mono, you can't really feel what's going on. A good thing about mono though, is it stretches. So for those snapper with their big head shakes and hard fights, you tend to pull less hooks or lose less fish when you're using mono. So that stretch absorbs their big head shakes and you know the hooks tend to stay in, whereas braid, sometimes if you go too hard, those hooks can pull out, but as long as you run a smooth drag, you're fine with the braid. Now, just really quickly as well, the actual line that we have on our reels. So dad has some old Berkeley fire line, which I don't even know if they make anymore. Now that's 30 pound, as I said, and he's had that for over 20 years and it's still going strong, which is, absolutely insane he's just he's transferred that from reel to reel over the years and i can't believe it but it's still going strong we look after it we wash it after our trips we keep it out of sunlight um, but still for a braid to do that that's absolutely unbelievable as they say they don't make it like they used to now here's the first laugh for you in the video my braid is actually from aldi the supermarket yes you heard me right so every year they have a fishing sale and um, we got this one year and I've had that for almost 10 years now and it is it is absolutely in tip-top condition catching big fish and uh, yeah it doesn't let me down at all really nice and thin and smooth and, and good for knots so that's 20 pound I, I can't believe it's actually so good but uh, yeah it's going strong as I said if it works guys use it if you're happy with it go for it it works for me it catches me fish no problems with it so People may laugh at me because it's cheap or whatever, but as I said, you don't need the top of the range gear to catch fish. Now on my brothers, he's running 30 pound braid, as I said, and I'm pretty sure we got this off eBay for about 20 bucks or something like that. Maybe, honestly, probably even less. And once again, that's caught some big fish, Spanish mackerel, big jewfish, snapper, all sorts of stuff, sharks. So yeah, really, really good stuff. Um, as I said, if it works for you, keep using it. This is a soft plastic rod that we use and this has got 12 pound braid on it which for snapper you may think is absolutely crazy but this has caught fish up to 70 centimeters, 12 pound braid, 14 pound leader and we actually barely ever get busted off which is really crazy. We get nice grassy sweet lip and pearl perch and all sorts of stuff on this but yeah the big snapper take it and we we land them no worries on that. Yeah it's, it's really really good fun and that's why we do it but um, you know if we were losing heaps of fish we wouldn't but it works so we it's, it's good fun and you land the fish you do get busted off every now and again but honestly i can't remember the last time we got busted off by a snapper on this so yeah give it a try if you really want to have some fun and test yourself now for those that have watched my videos in the past this is the setup that we usually leave in the rod holder we cast that plastic out and let it slowly sink down yeah just leave it in the rod holder click that back over and let it dangle around and it's caught us a lot of snapper seriously a lot of snapper
12 pound line. Now the leader that we use is fluorocarbon leader. I'll show you the brand in a second. But we use fluorocarbon because firstly, it's less visible underwater. And secondly, it's got better abrasion resistance if it does happen to touch the reef or a rough part of the fish. Now we use Berkeley Vanish fluorocarbon leader and it's really, really good. And we often just use 20 pounds. This is the Vanish fluorocarbon that we get. It comes in a 40 yard spool or a 250 yard spool. We get the 250 because it works out to be more affordable. For a long time, I thought, wow, I wonder if we go up to 30 pounds, whether those snapper will get spooked. You know, a lot of people say that snapper are leader shy, but over summer we were catching snapper on wire traces fishing for mackerel. So I definitely don't think they're gonna bother if it's 30 pound or 20 pound leader. Just to prove it to you, look at this. That was on a whole yakka. <laughs> we got wire on. So lately we've been using 30 pound as well. Absolutely no problems landing them on that. So it's up to you, whatever you wanna use. Obviously in your area, if you usually use 30 pound or 40 pound, just go for it. But I'm just letting you know what we use. So let's have a look finally at our rig setup and how we attach our leader and all that sort of stuff. So there's no swivel involved. You just tie line to line, braid to leader. Now we use a double uni knot, usually up to around 20 or 30 pounds. And anything over that, we go to an FG knot now. So I just find that's a nice slim knot as you get into that heavier line. Now on that, we run about a, around a three meter leader straight down to our rig. Now there's a couple of different rigs we run. Firstly, that one sometimes where it's just a ball sinker. Just lean that there. It's a ball sinker threaded straight onto your leader, can run up and down. As you can see, we're either using a set of gang hooks. I think they're five O's. You can use a set of three or two. So that's the first rig that we use or the other rig here that we use most of the time is whoop, our sinker once again, running up and down on the leader, down to two hooks that are snelled together. Now that's the rig that we use most of the time. It lets that bait present, present nice and naturally as it wafts down. Um, and the other thing is that second hook on the back there, a lot of the time that'll swing around and hit them in the side or sometimes you might hook them just by the bottom hook. So it definitely increases your hookup rate in my opinion. The other thing is if you do want to put a live bait down, that is the perfect rig to put one hook through the nose one through the back and send them down. I just thought I'd give you a closer look at those rigs that we use. These are the hooks that we snell together, must add Kirby Kendall's in the 4.0. So we use these for when we're floating dead baits. However, normal octopus style hooks work really well for this. And we're thinking of switching over to those. Let us know in the comments what you use. Now our soft plastic setup is exactly the same. Main line or braid tied straight onto our leader with a double uni or FG knot, whatever floats your boat. Two to three meters a litre, tied straight on to our jig head and soft plastic. Now, if you were using mono, you can either tie that straight onto your rig or you can tie on a swivel and a leader. Say you want to use a fluorocarbon leader and then onto your rig. So swivel between the main line and the leader, sinker running on the leader and then your hooks. All right, well, that brings us to the end of the video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed and I hope that helps you understand what we're using when we're out on the boat and I hope it's a good guide for you. Now make sure you stay tuned for plenty more snapper videos and heaps of other species. I've got a lot on the way, got plenty of videos ready for you, so stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. That really helps more than you can imagine. And feel free to leave a comment and ask any questions that you have. I'm happy to answer all of them and I love chatting to you guys and getting to know you. All right, thanks for watching this far. Tight lines and happy fishing.